It's like the cutest shirt ever. Look, the world needs more sparkle. I actually have a lot of sparkle dumped on me right now, so this is appropriate. Um, hey guys, how's it going? How are you? So we are gonna be discussing YouTubers, collaborations, products, and these are newer things that I have recently put to the test. I know I did a full like try on, chat through comparison of specifically eyeshadow palettes, but I have recently been like just in the products of uh, Kathleen Lights, Patrick Starr with his matte collaboration. Hank and Henry has these uh, gorgeous eyeshadow box. I'm gonna, I'll show you, very, very good. Um, but I have recently been using a lot of these and loving them, so I thought I would sit down and swatch and chat and talk and support collaborations that I'm really impressed with. Hank Henry is actually his own thing, so technically support a fellow YouTuber who has a product that I think is really great. Where shall we begin? You guys probably already noticed I am wearing a little more color than I normally do. I told you guys I wanted to try to play around with products a little bit more and not just do my everyday quick out the door makeup because I kind of miss going really hard with the makeup and this did take some time. So I guess let's just start right there because I want to break down this look for you guys. So I dove headfirst into this palette. I think this is probably the first ColourPop collaboration that really, really caught my eye to the point where I took the full PR box and I had it sitting on my desk and I was planning on like Snapchatting like the whole this thing and just, I don't know, it was one that really, really stood out to me. You have an eyeshadow, you have two lipsticks, you have liquid eyeshadows, and then you also have highlighters, which I really, really love so much. And I'm wearing one of them right now. ColourPop highlights are really fantastic. Like they're so, so good. So I am wearing quite a bit of these colors in here. I also mixed in a little MAC shadow and MAC shadows across the board. I feel like you really know what you're gonna get. It's gonna be a very buildable shadow. They have a very consistent formula in my opinion. I really love their mattes. I feel like anyone who is struggling to do a very blown out eye, the reason that I personally love MAC mattes is because it's extremely buildable. It allows you to pick up color put it on and really work with it. And then as you need more, you pick up, you you know put more on. So you can really like layer, layer, layer. It's not like one thick layer all at once, which if you are more advanced, maybe you like that. So it's really preference, but I have always had a good time with MAC shadows, I guess is my point. So from this collection right here, ooh, it kind of matches my eyeshadow. I'm like very matchy matchy. I'm wearing both of these shades right here. So this is Patrick's Star collection that I believe was the summer collection. Is that shade seriously called Sandy Crotch? Are you? <laughs> you know, NARS is really big on this. Urban Decay is big on this. Like the very kind of intense naming of eyeshadows, if you will. And there is nothing more hilarious and kind of awkward actually than working a counter and having like a cute little 80 year old woman come up and be like, I am looking for a deep throat blush. Do you also have orgasm? So I immediately am having like a flash to like working a counter and like having someone be like, hey, I really need to pick up that Sandy Crotch eyeshadow. Is that really what it's called? Am I reading this right? Stop it. Oh my God, I kind of feel like I want to tell you one of my most embarrassing stories and I promise you we're going to get into this video. It's not going to be like 5,000 years long. So I was like body surfing in Malibu and I must have been like 13 years old or 14 years old and I had this checkered one piece bathing suit that was like pink and white. I was with my three sisters and we're all body surfing, having a great time and something happened where I got like completely swept under the waves and I literally was doing like somersault, 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 somersault and I finally like emerged like up and was just like, <gasps> you know, and like finally like oh, I'm alive and I start like walking back to like our beach towel and I'm just like mom I almost died you know and my sisters start laughing so hard at me and they're like pointing at me and I'm like what you know and I look down and I had a sandy crotch you know the lining in bathing suits or underwear where there's like a lining where literally you could like stick your hand in it because it's not sewn on both sides was filled with sand and 
let's just try to imagine what that looked like on my little body with like a bulging like crotch area filled with sand. Oh my God, it was so embarrassing. They're pointing and laughing and I'm like turning red and I run back into the water and I'm like in the water, like wiggling around, like trying to like make it not be a sandy crotch anymore. Okay, that's story time for today. Wow, a name of an eyeshadow just brought me right back to that moment and I actually can feel it and I can kind of feel my face getting like warm. Okay, so friends, the first shade that we went into is Patrick Starr's Sandy Crotch and I put that all up in my crease. I worked this color through I spent a lot of time blending this, so I think the trick for you guys that you need to know is none of us here doing makeup, none of us do this. All right, moving on to the next one. Like you do have to spend your time, like really blend that through. I blended, I blended, I blended. I brought it up a little bit high in here because I like a heavier shadow in here if I know I'm gonna be doing a brighter color on the lid. Blended, 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 layered, layered, layered. I went into this shade on the bottom and I took another brush and what do you think I did? I blended, blended, blended. I made sure that I was holding the brush at the very end because I did not want a lot of pressure. So if you want to emphasize that shade with a darker shade and you're not really going to a middle shade, what I suggest is really make sure you are holding your brush at the very end. You are going in kind of flat like this, not too much up like this, flat like this, and you are going through and this is going to allow you to not have a ton of pressure on the brush. So you're gonna be able to kind of just fluff and lightly deepen up the crease. And then I took a pencil brush because I really wanted to add kind of a plum tone to this look. And I went into Kathleen Light's Zodiac palette and I went into Sagittarius. I did that very lightly, kind of the same thing and focused more pulling on the outer. I didn't really get the purple too close or too heavy up in here. And then my crease was pretty much done. So I decided, you know what, let's play. I wanna make the most of this. And I went into the shade Pisces right here, which you guys, with a brush, this is really, really tough to work with. I suggest using your fingertips. I suggest using a flat brush with Fix Plus or some type of setting spray, but I would not go in with a dry brush. This one does have a tendency to create a lot of fallout, so you definitely need to be aware of that because it is bright and it could potentially disrupt the rest of your concealer and whatnot, and you don't really want that. So go slow with this, use a pressing motion, don't wiggle and don't just use a dry brush is my advice, but it is a very, very pretty color. So after that, I went into my Hank and Henry little guy right here, which this is so underrated, okay? I will say one quick thing about this. It's bulky, okay? That's the one thing that I had a hard time kind of getting used to with these products, but the quality of these, like it's amazing. It's really, really, really good quality. And you know, the bulkiness does provide you with a crap ton of product. Like it really truly does. So you get in here and you have a lot of eyeshadow. I used this guy and I went straight in the area where I had open space. I pressed that in. I didn't need water or setting spray or whatever. I just pressed that in. And then I kind of did a little more blending with this shade right here. Cause I just really love this shade. Okay. It blends so beautifully. It kind of fills any gaps. If there's any choppiness or any harshness, or if you didn't pull the color out far enough, you can always take like one of your most trusted, you know, mid-tone brown shades that's not too light where it's just a transition shade and it's not so dark that it's like leaning toward an outer corner or liner shade. When it's, you know, somewhere in the middle like this, whether it's cool toned or warm toned, you can really just do a lot of manipulating your look if you didn't make it the way you wanted to originally. Like I sometimes don't pull it out far enough and I'm like, crap, like I want more balance. I want it to be pulled out more. So I will take a shade like this on a fluffy brush and just very lightly kind of try to pull and extend where I want to. Then I took that shade on the lower lash line and just kind of, you know, softened and smoked things out, nothing major. I then went into the loose pigment in here. I wet a brush and I put it right on the inner corner. The sad thing is I traveled with this, you guys. Like I went to Palm Springs and I brought this with me because this is probably one of my Number one most favorite pigments of all time, no exaggeration, it's the Luster Light and it's Miss Red Carpet. This is a vegan product, gluten-free, 
Um, just, ugh, it's made here in California. Whew. I mean, like, you guys don't even know. I made like a, such a cheese ball video in Palm Springs that I wanted to post to Instagram, but I just feel so cringy whenever I do my makeup really pretty and like I do the whole like this, like let me show you what I do. I like try to find good light and like I wanna show the product off and I do the whole like. I can't post those. Like although I like watching other people and I'm like, wow, that's some pretty makeup. When it comes to me putting that out there, I just feel like my whole family's laughing. <laughs> like who the hell does she think she is? And I can't get over that still. I'm working on it. Um, but anyway, I did wear this over the whole weekend that I was away and it was such a quick product to do like a beautiful quick look. I put it on the body, I put it on my cheekbones. I did also use over the weekend away Patrick Starr's bronzers from the summer collection, Hot and Heavy. I also used Give Me Life. Now Hot and Heavy surprised me because I looked at this and I was just like, mm, yeah, I don't think so. But when you put it on, you know, you take a light fluffy brush and you just kind of graze the skin, not just in that highlight area where you would kind of go hard with a blinding highlight, but if you just like get the entire area that maybe you've bronzed or blushed, this has such a kiss of highlight. It has that luminous kind of a thing that you kind of trick the eye and it's like, my skin's perfect. It's not highlight, it's not just bronzer, it's just, my fabulous skin. Like that's the kind of look that it gives you where you can even lightly graze areas that you normally might not want shine. There's not a ton of pigment in here to give you that like bronzy shimmery thing where with bronzers that are super shimmery and have a lot of pigment, I don't really like that. But this one is just so soft that you can really just get that angelic healthy skin look. And if you have deeper skin tones, I think this is gonna work even better. I just think it's beautiful. And then the bronzer blends so gorgeously. I like taking a fat little kabuki brush so that I can even like go down the neck. I can really get under here. I can kind of fluff the bronzer up toward my eye because that's kind of how I like to do it. And it just worked out beautifully. Like I am packing this for this weekend. I'm going away again. Um, and I'm taking these with because they are just awesome. So back to highlighting the face. This is so good. Okay, so I am definitely taking this too. Like these, they're so good, you guys. You have to make sure with any ColourPop creams, whether it's the shadow or a blush or a highlight, make sure that you close it all the way because air getting in the product is going to dry it out. So that is the only drawback with it. But so long as you are mindful of it, because I've lost shadows. Like I've come back into the studio and I've been like, no, because I like left it open all night and it's all like hard and dried and it's just like, today we lost some makeup, you know? So just be careful to close all of your makeup up if it's cream. But this is just so dreamy and so beautiful. I'm wearing it on my nose, wearing it on the high points. And the thing that I like about the ColourPop highlights is you can wear them on bare skin very easily and they don't crunch up or get bunchy or sit on top of the skin in a terrible way where it looks so super, super obvious. They are in a sense very buildable and I really love it. Love the price point of ColourPop obviously, um, but also on the cusp, this particular shade is just a very beautiful shade for fair to medium skin tones. She did also come out with Fire, which is going to suit medium to deep. I have not tried this one yet. Just looking at it, it does look like it's going to be a really good shade choice. So I like that she came out with both. I think that's super awesome. Really, really enjoy what I've been able to create and test out from this palette, you know, ColourPop shadows, you cannot argue that they have beautiful quality. They are not terribly expensive. And I think this is a really, really solid collab. I also want to mention what's on my lips is actually, would you, I don't know if I would technically say this is a creator. I really don't know too much of her backstory, but I will tell you this, at BeautyCon, like many, many years ago, this adorable but sophisticated, intelligent and wise beyond her years girl came up to me and told me about her company, Nude Sticks. And I immediately wanted to try everything and she was so educated and passionate about what she was doing. She was already in Sephora. 
and I have to say it is a killer line and I need to talk about it more because every time I use products, I am blown away. So I have this little kit right here that has their best selling lip products and I am wearing the shade Rose and I'm pretty sure you can purchase this individually. I've had this on all day, PS. This is just such a stunning, gorgeous shade, the tone of it, everything. But beyond that, you guys, the texture of these and like the evenness will blow your mind. You will put this on and it has just the right slip. It is super flattering. You don't need a lip liner. You just kind of put this on. And I just feel like these never dry my lips out. They never wear off in a bad way. Like, of course, this is not a dry down matte liquid lip. So if I eat, drink, have lunch, whatever, I'm gonna have to touch up. But it's the kind of thing where you can almost touch up without a mirror. It's very quick, very easy. I wanted to also show you guys this right here from Patrick. This is from the summer collection as well. And this is Fashion Punch. And really, I can't decide which one I like better. I have two of them here. I have Fashion Punch and I have Cream Pie Lip Glass. It got a lot of the scent. Matte glosses, right? Oh, so good. Oh, they just have this like gel shine that is just like a mirror. Like it's so reflective and beautiful. So I love both of these so much. And then Patrick did come out with, of course, his latest collection. And this right here is called Sugar Mama. And this has, let's look at the names. Sugar Stick, Deception, Damn She Olive, First Class. So there are two different quads. This is the one that I have had on my desk that I have been using the most. I used this shade right here today on the very, very, very outer edge of my eye. And that pretty much tied up my look. It blends beautifully. It's a MAC shadow. It's gorgeous. The tone in here is gorgeous. All of these are very, very, very pretty. And then I'm so, so hooked on the summer collection. So if you can still grab this one, I do really, really recommend it. Oh, also from Kathleen Lights. I have not tried these on the eyes. Maybe let's do that right now before I blow you a kiss and call it a day. I do really like these cream shadows from ColourPop. If you like a cream shadow, that's actually almost the same shade as what I was using from Hank and Henry. But this is a part of the Zodiac collection. Let's try the other shade really quick too. So this one was Constellation. This one right here is Astrology. I'm just gonna kind of ruin my look just cause I want you guys to see this swatched. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. That's like metallic glam expired mustard. Um, does mustard expire? I don't know. Does that make any sense what I just said? Look at this shade though. It's very, very pretty. And you know, I do have a bunch of these already. I know they perform well. So if you like these shades, then I would say go for it. Everything here gets a thumbs up from me. And if you liked this video, then you can give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. I love you guys so much. I hope to hang out with you again soon. If you have not subscribed, then make sure you do that before you leave. It's really easy. Hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and turn on that bell next to it so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. I am here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10 a.m. PST, and I hope to see you again soon. All right, I love you so much, and I will see you in my next video. Mm.